Hi, it's Jordan Teen One, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this adorable little bunny. So the one I'm going to be showing you is the one on the left here, the green one, and the one on the right um, is my first example that I had done. And if you look, the one on the right, the body is just a little bit different. It's a little bit bigger. And when I started to film this, it just got so long that I decided to rework it and make just a little bit of a smaller body. And then you can see for this one, I used beads for the eyes. And for this one, I just used rubber bands. So I think either way, it turns out really cute. What you're going to need to make your bunny is a hook and I'm using the rainbow loom metal hook but you can use a crochet hook or whatever you're most comfortable with. I have a twisty tie to make my magic rings but that's optional. I'm going to be using two beads for the eyes and if you don't have beads you can use buttons or just other rubber bands. You're going to need a bunch of C-clips and a pile of stuffing for the arms, legs, body, and head. And then as far as your band counts go, um, I tried to be as accurate as possible, but I could be just a few off, give or take how many you use for anchor bands and things. But I have eight pink bands for the nose and the mouth. I have 116 white bands. And then whatever the main color of your bunny is, which I'm going to be using green, I have 650. The first thing that we're going to make is the bunny foot and we're going to start out by making the toe part and that begins with a magic ring. So what you're going to need for that are six white bands and I am going to be showing it with a twisty tie just because I think it's a little bit easier to do. Um, but you can also make it on the loom if you have a loom and you find that easier. Kate Schultz from Islicious Designs has a tutorial for that. So what I'm going to do is just take the twisty tie and put it against my hook. And then I'm going to take one band and I'm going to triple it. So I'm just placing it on, twist, put it back on, twist, and put it back on. So now it's looped over both the twisty tie and the hook. I'm going to just pull this up and bend it in half and this is just going to allow me to keep those three rubber bands together. I think it's just a little bit easier when you have something to grab onto. So now we're going to take our first white band that's going to pull through this tripled band and then you're just going to get the other end that was in your fingers back on your hook. Pull one end through the other to make a slip knot. And now I'm going to just take my hook and I'm going to go in through the front. Technically you can go in um, through the front or from the back, but you just need to stay consistent throughout your design. So I'm going to be doing it through the front. Taking a second band, it's going to come through back on your hook so you'll have the three loops. And the one on the end is just going to pull through the other two. Again, back in from the front getting that third band to come through back on your hook and then the end one slides through the other two and then I'm going to pull a fourth one through and if you feel like you're having trouble just sliding the hook through you can always just use your fingers and pull these over um, it does take a little bit of practice to learn how to maneuver your hook and then I'm going back through for the last one. And that pulls through the other two. So now I can just remove this twisty tie here. And you can see they're kind of bunched up, so you just want to take a second and spread these out so they're pretty much even with one another. And then you're going to take a clip and you're going to mark this band. It's the fifth one that's on your hook, just so we know where we ended. Now in row two, you're going to need a total of eight rubber bands, and we are going to be doing an increase. So the pattern's going to be two, one, two, one, two, um, in each of the stitches. 
So in this first stitch here, and let me show you what I'm talking about by a stitch in case you're not familiar with it. Um, you can see here where we left off. So a stitch would be really the next loop of the band that's on the top that you can see here. And let me just stick my hook through it. You can see it has two um, parts of the band. It has a back and a front. So you always want to make sure that you're going through both unless otherwise noted. And I'm going to be doing two rubber bands in this first stitch. So I'm just going to pull the first one through. It goes back on my hook so you'll have the three loops there. And the end pulls through the other two. That's what's called a single crochet. And we're going to be using that technique pretty much throughout except for a few little sections. So I'm going back through that same stitch, make sure you're going in the same one, and you're going to pull that second band through and then through the other two. So then we're moving over to the left and we're going through this next stitch. So you can see I'm going through both sections there. And this time we have just one single band that's going through that stitch moving over to the next one and here we're going to have the two that are going through the same stitch so that's one back through the same for the second and then moving around here we have just one for the next and then finally you should be back at the start where your clip is and we have two that we're going to pull through there. So that's one and then through it again for the second. And then every time you're done a row you always want to move the clip. So I'm just taking it off of there and I'm putting it on the one that's on my hook. So you should have a total of eight stitches if you count from the top here there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight would be the one that you have on your hook. Now for rows three, four, and five, we're going to just be doing one single crochet in each of the stitches. So you need eight in each of the rows. So you're just going to follow along with that single crochet pattern. You're going to the next stitch here and making sure you're going through the front and the back and you're just going to do that one in each and if you want to you can count them out as you're doing it or just count them in your head I think after you get more comfortable doing it you won't feel the need to do that as much but I know when I first started um, I would do that. And the nice thing about having them all counted out in piles already is that if it doesn't line up, if your last band isn't going through um, the one where your clip is, then you know something's off with that row. So I have one left here where my clip is and I have one band left so I know I'm correct. So this will be the eighth one. And then always just move your clip right away. So I'm going to go ahead and let you finish the next two rows on your own. So you can pause the video here. Now for row 6 you're going to need a total of 14 white rubber bands and you can see how I have them laid out. You're going to do two single crochets, then we're going to do three puff stitches and you need three rubber bands for each of those piles and then we'll be doing three single crochets. So if you happen to have made my Easter puff basket it's a very similar stitch to that. Um, we are going to be doing it just slightly different than that but I'll explain it. So you're starting out with just two regular single crochets. So you're just finding where your clip is and going to this next stitch. So 
So that's the first one. Then moving over to the next stitch for the second. And now for this puff stitch, and let me just point out too, if you feel like you're having trouble seeing what you're doing here, you can always just stretch this out a bit to just get a better view of your stitches. So for this puff stitch, which we're doing next, which is in the third stitch over from your clip, what you're doing is you're going through like regular, you're taking one band and you're pulling it through and putting it back on your hook. And so now you have three loops on, but now what you're going to do is go through that same stitch again while leaving these three on your hook. So go through, grab another rubber band, pull it through, and put that one back on your hook. So now at this point you should have five loops on your hook. You're taking that third rubber band and it's just going to pull through all of these. And if you pull down on the foot while you're pulling this band through, it does help out a little bit. And now what you're going to do is just leave these two like they are. And then what you're going to do is go to the next stitch over. So I would recommend taking your finger and just holding these two sort of back on the hook and you're going to put your hook through this next stitch. Now we have our next set of three bands. So the first one is going to come through and go back on your hook. So now you have these four loops and then hold these back and you go through again to pull that second one through. And so now you have a total of six on your hook and you're taking that third band and you're going to pull that through all the ones on your hook, get it back on, and then just leave them like they are. And then finally we're going to do one more of these puff stitches. So this is just going to lengthen this side to make the heel. So you're going to pull the first one through, get it back on your hook, so you have four loops. Go back through the same one, pull your second one through, back on so you have six loops and then that third band is going to go through them all and believe me it is easy to get hung up when you're pulling these through I'm actually getting hung up myself there a little bit put that back on and then we have three more singles and you should have three loops left or three stitches left to go through so just go through the next one you're going to do a regular single crochet you will have an extra loop on your hook to go through, but just pull the end one through the other three. And then for the next one over, it should be back to normal. So you have your single. And then finally, this last one where the clip is, you should have one more single to do. And then you just want to move your clip. For row 7 we're going to repeat that same process, so you need a total of 14 bands. We're doing the two single crochet, the three puff stitches, and then three singles. And we are going to be doing something a little bit different, um, which is tacking this to the front of the foot, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So you're going to start with your first single crochet, which is going to be like the top of the foot here. So you're just finding this next stitch and going through and then here's where we're going to tack it and what I mean by that is we've gone through this normal stitch but now I also want to go through a section on the top of the foot that's just going to help make that bend in the leg um, from the foot to the leg so I would recommend just going pretty much straight back from where you are but you don't want to go too far back in the foot or it's going to make um, too much of a buckle so just go I would say like right here it's, it's a little bit off to the left but I would just say here's a nice open area that I can go through. So you can see now I have my regular stitch and now this other um, two rubber bands. And then I'm going to take my band, pull it through both sets here, get it back on my hook. So I have the three bands still and I'm just going to pull one through the other two. So as I said, it's just going to tack it. It's going to make this draw forward, which is going to make the bend that we need for the leg. And then you're going to go around to your next one here. 
So I know it might be a little confusing when you see the top here. We've already gone through this stitch and so this would be our next stitch and again it's going to be a single crochet, just a normal one this time. There's no tacking to do till we get around to the other side. And then if you look here where we did our puff stitches, you can see they're sticking out more, but you should have just a nice stitch on top to go through that should have a front and a back. And we're just going to make um, puff stitches on top of where we already did them. So we're going to start by getting that first one drawn through, going back through the same one, and drawing through a second band. So you're going to have the five loops on your hook. It's only going to be five the first time you do it, and then the rest of the times it's going to be six. And now that third rubber band is going to pull through all of these, and back on your hook. And now working our way around here, I'm going through this next stitch, which was a puff stitch from the row prior. And again, you're going to pull through two bands. So that's one, back through the seam to pull through a second. So now you have the six loops. And then this third band in your pile will pull through all six and back on your hook. And then coming around, we have one more puff stitch to do. So I have one, and then a second. You're going to have the six loops on your hook, and then the last one in that pile goes through all. And so now we're going to do one um, single crochet in the next one. So just be careful that you're going in the right stitch, so just look to the top here. You should have three stitches left that you need to go through. So this would be my next one. It's just a regular single crochet. And again, you're going to have three loops to go through just for this first one. And you should have two single crochet left. And we're just going to do the tacking for the last two here for the top of the foot. So I'm going through the next stitch and then I also want to find a spot on the top of the foot, so I'm just going to go through these bands right here. Going to pull this band through the top of the foot and then my regular stitch, put it back on, pull one through the other two, and then you should have one left where your clip is, so you want to go through that. And then again on the top of the foot, find some open area, go underneath of that as well, pulling through the top of the foot. I think I got hung up there on a band. And then the regular stitch, back on your hook, and pull one through the other two. And then you can take off your clip and move that one forward. And then I'm just going to take a minute here and sort of stretch this out. You can see where our puff stitches are. We want this to be coming up and around for the heel. And then these ones that we tacked in the front should be pulling towards um, the top of the foot there. For me, it's towards the left here. In rows 8 through 13, we're going to change to the color of your bunny, so I'm doing green. And there's going to be one single crochet in each of the stitches. So in each of my six piles, I have eight rubber bands. So I'll do the first one with you, and then you can finish the rest on your own. So you're going to take your foot, and you should have your clip, and you should have your hook through that band. So you're just going to go over to the next stitch over to the left, and put your hook through. And you're taking your first green band, or whatever your color is, and you're pulling it through. And now since we're changing colors, you will need to do a slip stitch. So instead of putting this back on your hook and pulling it through the other two, all you're going to do is pull through this white band that's on your hook, and then put this back on your hook and pull through. So we're just trying to keep the white as close to the other white as possible. 
And then I'm just going through the next one here. So will be my second. And then we're going around here where our puff stitches are, but you should just have a nice um, stitch on top to go through. So that's my third. And now the next one here. That was my sixth. Keep going around. This will be my seventh. And then you should have one more band for that pile. And you should have your last stitch where the clip is. It's going to go through that. Pull through and back on. And then through. And I'll just move my clip. And I will just point out, let me just show you the start of the next row, because this can be a little confusing. When you change colors and you make that slip knot, you may think, if you look at the top for the stitches, you can see here how you can see a little bit of white, and then what looks like possibly about a half size of a stitch for the green. And that is something that you don't want to go through. That's not an actual stitch that we need to do. So if you would look to the left of that, this is our first stitch. And if you're uncertain, you can always just count them. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight would be on my hook. So that way you would know that you don't need to go through this first part here. So I'm just gonna stick my hook through, and then this would be my next row, the beginning of my next row. So I'm just going to let you finish the rest of this leg on your own, so you can pause the video here. Now once you have your bunny foot made, you're going to go ahead and make a second one. So I'm not going to show this on film just for the sake of time. So you can go ahead back in the tutorial and I'll add the time for you to go back to to follow along with the steps again. Once you have your two legs made, what you're going to do is fill them with your stuffing. So you just want to take little sections. I would recommend just using very small little sections since the legs aren't very big. And then you're just going to push it down inside. And then you're going to have to get it to bend around the corner a little bit and fill into the foot. And you want it to be you know, a little bit full, but not so full that you can see the stuffing in between the um, spaces in the rubber bands. So you can, t it's totally up to you how full you want to make it. I'm just going to add a little bit more here for the leg. And then you would do the same thing to fill the second one. Next we're going to make the arms and for this it's going to start the same way as the foot. You need a total of six white rubber bands. We're going to do a magic ring with five bands that are going around that center band. So I'm going to use my um, twisty tie again and I'm going to triple one of the bands. So you have your three loops on there. And I'm just going to bend this in half so I have something to hold on to. And I'm going to pull through the five bands one at a time. So that's one, back through from the front. So that's my second. Three. four, and one more left. And then I can get this twisty tie out. I want to spread this around. And then I'm going to take a clip and mark the band here that's on my hook.
For row two, you're going to need a total of eight rubber bands, and we're following the two, one, two, one, two pattern. So I'm just going to my next stitch over here, and there's going to be two single crochets in that stitch. So that's my first one, and then back through the same one for a second. Next we have just one single crochet, and then two for the next one. And then for the next, just one. And then finally, where your clip is, you should have two left. So that's one, and then back through for the second. And then I just want to move my clip. In rows three and four, we're just doing one single crochet in each stitch, so you have eight bands in each of those rows. So since these next two rows are pretty straightforward, I'm just going to go ahead and let you do those on your own. So you can pause and do that now. Now for rows five through eight, we're changing to the color of your bunny. And we're just doing one single crochet in each stitch, so I have eight rubber bands in each of the piles. So I'm just going to go ahead and do row five with you, and then you can do the other three on your own. So we're starting here where our hook is with the clip, and I'm just going to the next stitch. And since we are changing to colors, we're going to have to do that slip stitch. So you're just pulling through all of the white that are on your hook, putting it back on, and then making that slip knot. So that'll be your first stitch, and then you're just going to work your way around. Oops, lost that one. So this is my seventh, and then this is my last one. And I'll just move this clip. And now again, um, just like with the foot, since we did do a slip stitch and we changed colors, just don't be fooled on where you need to go. So you see this little piece of the white and then this little like half stitch of green. You're not going in through that. You're going to this next stitch over to count as your first stitch in the next row. So I'm just going to go ahead and let you finish the other three rows here so you can pause. In row 9, we're just going to do 4 single crochets, which is going to take us halfway around the arm. And the reason that I'm doing this is just to make it a little bit higher on one side, so when the arm lays against the body, it's not coming straight out, that it has a little bit of slant to it. So you're just going to work your way around from where your clip is. So you're just going to do um, 4, so that's 1... two, three, and then one more. And then you just want to move your clip so you know where we ended here. And then when you do attach this to the body, you'll know um, that the stitches right before where the clip are, are what would be the top of the arm. And of course it just fell off, so let me get it right back on there. So it would attach like this. So now you just want to pause here and make your second arm. 
And again, I'll add the time for you to go back to if you need to follow along again with the tutorial. Once you have your two little arms made, then you just want to fill them with your stuffing here. So again, just um, don't overstuff, but it's totally up to you how full you want them to look. And I am just going to use little small sections just because they are pretty little, but they do stretch when you stick your finger down in there. And you want to have as much of the stuffing all the way in as you can because when it comes time to attach the arms and legs you don't want to have to be fighting with all these little pieces of fluff that are sticking out the top. So just go ahead and fill both of your arms. Now for the body, you're going to start with a magic ring with six stitches. So you're going to need seven rubber bands. So you're going to just triple that first band on your hook or on your loom if you prefer that. I'm just going to bend this here. And now I have six bands left that I'm just going to pull through. Just one at a time here. So that's my first one. Second. Three. Four. Five, and then one last one here. Gonna take out my twisty tie, spread this all around, and then I'm gonna attach my clip. In row two of the body, you're going to need a total of 12 rubber bands, and we are going to do an increase in every stitch, so I have my bands laid in piles of two. So that's the first one, and then a second in the same stitch. And we're just doing that the whole way around, two in each. Just because it's the bottom of the body and we want it to get kind of wide right away. So hopefully everybody is getting the hang of this. Either you've already made a lot of other um, crochet things and you're already good at it, or at least if you're new to it that you're getting the hang of it and you can move along a little bit quicker. And then you should have just two left. And then I'm going to move my clip. You're going to need 18 bands for row 3. And you can see we're going to do a pattern of 1, 2, 1, 2 in each of the stitches. So we are still increasing. So in this first one I'm just doing 1. And then in the second stitch, I'm going to be doing two. And then in the third, it's just one. And then in the fourth, I have two. So 
So I'm just going to continue in that pattern. I won't continue to say every single one. Whoops, just lost them all. Happens occasionally. The nice thing is, if it happens to slip off of your hook, you should be able to just get it right back on and it shouldn't really come all apart on you. Sometimes when you're making other bracelets, if it starts to come apart, it's really hard to get it back to where it was. So now for my last one here, you should have two left. And then your total stitch count for this row would be 18. Just going to move this clip here. For row 4, you're going to need a total of 24 rubber bands, and this is our last row that we're still going to be doing increases. So you can see the pattern's going to be 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2 for this entire row. So I'm starting out with a single. And then for the second stitch, it's still a single. And then in the third stitch, we have two. And then in the next one, you're back to single. Single. And then two for the next. So we're just going to work around doing that same pattern. So I have two more sets of the pattern. And then I have my last set here. So in your last stitch, you're going to have um, the two bands, and then if you count them, you should have a total of 24 all the way around. Let me just move my clip here. In rows 5 through 9, you're going to be doing one single crochet in each stitch. So I have a total of 24 bands in each of my piles. So I'm just going to go ahead and let you do these 5 rows on your own. So you can pause the video here. For row 10, you're going to need 22 rubber bands. And we are going to start to do a decrease. So the way that I have it laid out is I put a clip in the bands that are going to be a decrease, meaning they're going to have two stitches together. So we're going to do five single crochet 
and then in the sixth and seventh stitch we're going to put them together for a decrease and then for the next ten we're going to do single crochets and then in stitch 18 and 19 they're going to be together for a decrease and then five more single crochets so here's what it should look like and we're going to go around and do five singles so I will count these out this is one two three four and five and then in the next one is where we want to do a decrease so I'm taking the sixth stitch I'm putting my hook through and then what I'm going to do is pull back towards myself and I'm going to go through from the front to back in through the next stitch so you can see how I have both of the stitches on my hook plus the one that's always on there and I'm going to take a rubber band I'm going to pull it through the first stitch and then I'm going to also pull it through the second stitch and it is a little bit more challenging to get it to go through that second one so you might have to use your fingers to help it through and then I'm going to pull just so there's about an even amount of space on both ends of that band I'm going to get it back on my hook and it's going to slide through the other two so now we've just joined those two stitches together and then when you go over to your next stitch make sure you're not going through this one um, if you look here on the inside you can see that that our band did go through that so you want to make sure you're jumping over to that next stitch and we're going to do a total of 10 single crochets now so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine and then one more makes ten and now in the next two stitches again we're going to do a decrease so I'm putting my hook through pulling it back towards myself and going through that next stitch so you can see those two stitches plus the other band on your hook and then I'm just gonna draw this band through the one and then through the second get them about even put this back on my hook and pull one through the other two and then you should have five rubber bands left and there should be five open stitches so again just make sure you're not going through this one I know it's a little bit stretched and you may think you need to go through that but you can see here that we do have a band through that so you're going to the next one over so we have one two three four and then the last one where your clip is makes five and then you're just going to move your clip and what you can do is just take a minute and where these stitches were joined just take a second and try and smooth that out as best as you can
Row 11 is going to be one single crochet in each stitch, so you're going to need a total of 22 bands. And I am just going to go ahead and let you do this one on your own, just for the sake of time. In row 12, we're going to do another decrease, and you're going to need a total of 20 rubber bands. So we're going to do four single crochet, and then the fifth and sixth stitch are together for a decrease. Then we're doing 10 single crochets. Stitch 17 and 18 are together for a decrease. And then the remainder, you're going to have four single crochet. So I'll just work my way around the four single crochet here. So that's one. two, three, four, and then the fifth and sixth stitches are together. So you're pulling that band through both, getting it back on, and then one slides through the other two. And then we're on to 10 single crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then the next two are going to go together. So one and then two together. Get that rubber band to go through both. Get it back on your hook. Try and even it out a little. One goes through the other two. And then you should have four singles left. So that's one, two, three, and then four. And then you're moving that clip. And again, you can just take a extra couple of seconds and try and smooth that out where you did the decrease. Now the next thing that I'm going to do before I continue building my body is I want to get the legs anchored onto the body piece. So I have six rubber bands that I'm going to use as the anchors and I also have a clip that I have put on each of these rubber bands and I'll show you how I'm going to use that. And then for the other leg, you'll need six bands as well. And I'm not going to get six more clips because I'll just use these when I'm done with them. So I definitely think this is the hardest part, trying to figure out where to put the legs and actually get them hooked on. Um, so basically, if I look from the top, I can see here where I did my decreases because it's a little bit more of an oval shape. So I can tell right here is where I want the sides to be. And then if you look from the bottom, you can see here where the magic ring started as what the center point is. So you probably want to base where you want to put your legs on that. So if this is the side and this is the middle down here, you want to go somewhere right around here. So what I'm going to do is put my first anchor band in and I'm going to do the first one right here 
So what I'm going to do is reach in from the outside, push my hook up through, and I'm going to get this first band that I have a clip on, and I just grab it on my hook, and I'm going to pull it down through so that's just sticking out. Just don't pull, pull too hard or the um, C-clip will come through there. And then let me just see, let me measure up the leg and see where I think I want the next band to go. So I definitely, definitely want it to go out to the side here more. So let me just move over here. And I'll pull that next band. Let's get it on my hook and pull it down through. And then I definitely want to work towards around here towards myself. So I'll go through this next one. Pulling it down. And then let's see, I'm still coming down a little bit more. So I will go through right here. I mean, it really is just an educated guess. And if you start to attach it and you don't like um, the positioning, you can always just redo it. Oops, I don't want to pull that one too hard. I'm almost pulling the clip through. And I have to work my way back around here. So go through this next one. Pull this one out and then I'm going to do one more that I need to be somewhere around here so let's see I don't really want to go through this very center one this is the um, magic ring so I'm going to go through this one here So now I've done um, six, and so I'm ready to attach the leg here. So I'll start here with the one that is closest to the center. So I want to match that up with the inside of the leg here. And you can see how we have this one band that has the clip on it. When we attach this, um, we're going to need to go in through this and through the stitch. It looks like it would be this next stitch back here. And let me see if I think that's the center. It's not quite the center. I think that I would call this one more the center. So let me just take my clip and I'm going to leave this on and I'm going to just attach it through that next stitch as well. So I know when I get to that stitch I need to go through um, those three to have the three loops on. And I see a little bit of my fluff coming out. So I'm going to go through what I think is the middle of the inside of the leg and then I'm going to find that band and I'm going to pull it through then I'm going to take my hook off, but I'm going to pinch that band in my fingers. And then I'm going to go inside and come down through that same spot, or as close to it as you can get. Grab that band and pull it up through. And then where the clip is, which is the other side of that band right here, I'm going to just attach this band as well so that each side of that band is now through the same clip and I'm going to let that go. So that's one that we have done and it looks like I made the next one come a little bit loose. Let me see. So now I'm going to move to the one in the front here and I'll go through another stitch. Now since we're going to have eight stitches across the top of the leg, but I only did six anchors. And you could do eight anchors if you wanted, but I think six will be plenty. So I'm not going to go through the very next stitch. I'll skip one and go to this next stitch. Actually, let me do go through that next one because I don't want the toe to be pointed inward. 
going to grab this band and pull it through, pinch it in my fingers, and then I'm going to come down through from the inside, grab that band and pull it up through. And then you can always fold this down if you need to to get a better view. Find the other side of that clip and attach. And so now I am going to skip a stitch, go to this next stitch over, go through, take the next band, pulling it through, holding it with my fingers, coming down through, trying to get through that same spot, grabbing it, pulling it up through, and it looks like I'm a little hung up here, and grabbing that same clip, and attaching. So now you can see how the position of the leg is going to look on the body. If you think that you don't like how it is, um, now would be the time that you could, you know, take all of them out and, and work it around again. So I have three left here, so I'm going over to this next stitch. Pulling the next rubber band through, holding it in my fingers, and then I'm going to come down through, grab it and pull it up, and I need to get it attached to the clip. It doesn't look like it went all the way on. Okay, and now I have two left. So I do have this one here that I have to get the extra loop to go on. So I'm going through the next stitch. Pull it up. And then I'm attaching it to the clip. And then I have one more here, and again, this is where my clip is, so let me just unattach that from the stitch. And you should still have that last loop that we were holding closed with it. I'm going to totally unattach this. So I have the loop on my hook. Actually, let me just untwist it. And then I'm also going to pull through that last stitch. Grab this last loop. And it's going to go through all three here, holding it on my fingers and coming down through. And then I should have one more clip that just has one band on. And if you want, you can totally flip this inside out now. And this is my clip I need to get attached. So now you should have um, six clips, or however many anchors you put on, and they should each have two rubber bands, each side of the same rubber band. So I'm just going to start over here, get them both on my hook, and unattach that clip. And I'm just going to go around in a circle. So I'm going to do the two that are on each clip, and then I can release the clip. And then the two on the end of the hook just pull right through the two previous ones. Just go around to the next and get the clip off. Again, the two previous ones or the two end ones go through the two previous. And then I'm going around to the next. Pulling them through. So we have two left here. Just unattaching this. Pull them through. And then here's my last clip. Make sure I get through both of these.
and then they pull through. Now I'm going to take one additional band and I'm going to take my clip and, excuse me, my hook and go through the first two bands. And I'm going to take my last rubber band and go through all four. Put it back on my hook and make a really nice and tight slip knot. You don't want that to come apart. And now you can pull this up. And now you would just repeat the same process to attach the other leg. For row 13, 14, and 15 of the body, they're just going to be single crochet in each of the stitches. So you want a total of 20 rubber bands in each of the piles. So I'm just going to go ahead and let you do that on your own. The next thing that we're going to do before we continue with the body is to add the arms. So it's going to basically be the same thing that we did with the legs. I have six bands that I've put clips on for the anchor bands. And you really just have to eyeball it to see where you want them to go. If you remember, we added four extra bands, so it should be a little bit taller on the bands that are right before the clip. So that's what we want to be the top of the arm. And you just basically have to see where the side is. And if I push this, you can almost fold it in half to see where those um, decreases are for the sides. So we basically want it to be right in the middle there of all of those. And it's going to go pretty close to the top. After this layer, we're going to do some decreasing to um, do the neck part. So I want it to be pretty high up. So basically, I'm just going to reach through here from the outside, and I'll pull one band through with my clip there, and then I'll just go around here, come over to the right and down a little bit. And then I'll just come below here. And then I'll start working my way around. And then I'm coming back up. And then right here I'll do my last one. So I should have six there. And you can kind of see how you think that'll work. And then I need to Again, I'm going to have to attach where this loop is here, this band where the clip is. I want to also get it to go through the next band, and it should be pulling over to the right here. So I'm just going to find that next stitch, and then I'm going to attach the clip um, through that stitch as well as the one that's already on there. So I need to go through those three loops when I get to that part. So I'm going to start right here. I'll go through this one here that the clip is on. And I'm going to go through this one here, sort of towards the top right. hold it in my fingers. I'm going to reach in from the inside and grab the other side of it. Pull it in and then hook it on that clip. And then I'll go to the next one over to the left here. Actually, I think Yes, I'll just go to the very next one, get the next band to pull through, hold it in my fingers, and reach in from the back, or from the inside of the body, pull through, 
and I just lost it, but I'm going to grab it again here and put that through the clip. Believe me, I know that some of you are going to struggle with this because I myself struggle with this, so it's not easy by any means. So now I am going to skip a stitch and go to the next stitch over. Pull this next one through. And then pull it through. So we're halfway done. Let me go under the arm, pick up another stitch, and this other band. I'm a little bit low with my hook. Let me just pull through here again. Get it on that clip. And let's see, I should have two left here. sort of at an odd angle. Let me just turn the bunny around. Alright, now I have to find the clip that it belongs on. Here I see it's this one. And then there's one more here, and this is the one where my other clip is, so I'm going to go through the loop. I'm going to try to go through the loop. And then also the stitch. So there should be three bands on my hook. I'm going to take this clip off. And then I'm going to pull this through all three of the loops. Pull this to the inside. And I should have one clip left that only has one band. And I'll actually, I'm not even going to attach it, I'll just unattach this one and get them both on my hook. And now I'm just going to work my way around here. And make sure I have both of them on there. And I'll just work my way in a circle here around these clips. And I'm pulling the two on the end through the other two. And then go move over to the next. Pull those through the previous. Whoops. Just lost them, but I'll get them right back. Do that again. Two more left here. Sometimes they came, come off nice and easy and other times it's a major struggle. It's my last set. And 
And then I'm going to take another band. I'll go back through some here at the start. Pull through all four and then make a nice tight slip knot. And so there's my one arm that's now attached. You can see how that looks. So you can go ahead and pause here and do your other arm. Now another thing I'm going to do before I close up the neck part is I want to attach the tail. So for the tail you're going to need a total of 14 white rubber bands and you can see I have four different piles with three in each pile and then I have two singles and I do have a clip attached to one and that's just going to be to help from the band sliding off the other end when we pull it through. So I'm going to take uh, my first pile of three and I'm going to double them all together on my hook. So I'm just putting them on, twisting and putting them right back on. I'm going to do this for all the sets of three. So this is my second set and your hook will get pretty full. This is my third set and then once more I have my fourth set. And then I'm going to take my band here that has the clip and I'm just going to hold it on there and then I'm going to carefully slide the rest of these bands on. Now it's definitely easy to get hung up on all of these bands so just take your time and go slowly. And then I'm going to take my bunny, just make sure that these aren't sliding off over the clip. Take my bunny and I'll flip them over and then you can judge where you think you want the tail to be, obviously somewhere near the bottom here on the back. So I'm going to take this and pinch it and take my hook out. Then I'm going to reach my hook inside and somewhere sort of in the center but a little bit off to the right, I'm going to push my hook out through and I'm going to grab the end that's pinched in my fingers and pull that in towards the back. And now without losing it what I need to do is push my hook out just a little bit over to the left and I want it to be basically even with the one I have now. Push my hook back out and this time I'm going to grab the end that the clip is on and get my hook through that going to remove this clip and I'm going to pull this through to the back. So you should have two white bands there. You're going to take your last white band and make a nice tight slip knot, really tight so it doesn't come apart. And then you have your little fluffy bunny tail. And you can adjust these if you think they need any kind of adjusting. Now for row 16 of the body, you're going to need 15 rubber bands and we are going to do a decrease to form the neck. So it's going to be two singles and then a decrease, two singles and a decrease is your pattern. So you can see here's my bunny body with all the limbs attached except for the head of course. So I'm just going to work my way around and I know my body is probably going to make um, my bands move out of place so just bear with me on that. So I'm going to this next one over. We're doing two singles. So that's one and two. And then the next two which is the third and fourth stitch are going to go together. So I'm doing that decrease, so through one, pull back, and go through the second. And then I'm taking my band, I'm going to pull through both, even it out, and then one pulls through the other two. And then, of course, you have to make sure you're not going through the same stitch, because we did account for that one already. So next you're having two singles. 
So it's one, one, and then the next two will be a decrease. And then we're on to two singles, and like I said, I knew this would get messed up, but... So it's one... Two... And then the next two together. And just pulling through these. This is always a little bit of a struggle. I actually completely lost that, so let me start that one over. Have the two together. Pulling through the first set, and then through the second. And I lost it again. There we go. And now I'm going through the next two singles here. So one, two, and then a decrease. And then we have two singles. So it's one. Whoops, that's my decrease one. Two. And then you should have two stitches left that you're going to do together for the decrease. And that should be your last band. Pull it through and then just move your clip so you can see we've definitely narrowed that neck opening here and again you can take a minute to play around with your stitches a little bit so now you should have a total of 15 stitches going across the neck area In row 17, you're going to need 12 rubber bands, and we're going to be repeating that same decreasing pattern. So we're going to do 1, 1, and a decrease, 1, 1, and a decrease. Um, you're not going to have enough to complete four different sets, so your last three bands are just going to be singles. You're not going to be able to fit that last decrease in. So again, I know the bunny body is going to make these get out of order. So make sure when you're going through this next one here that you're not going through this first stitch because this was part of our decrease. I know it may be a little bit misleading, but you're going to this next stitch over. And so you're doing one, and then one, and then the next two stitches will be a decrease. And then following it around, we have one, one, and then a decrease. And then again, you really have to look to see, um, this band looks pretty stretched, but I do see that was part of my decrease because I see a band through it. So 
So I have one, and that's my second one, and then I have a decrease. And then I should have just three singles left. So there's one, two, and then my last one where the clip is, is the third single. Just move this. So now you can see we have it pretty well narrowed for the neck. So what I'm going to do next before I continue on with the rest of the head part is I'm going to stuff his body. I think it'll just be a little bit easier to do now before I start doing the head. So it's he has a pretty fat belly so I'll need pretty much stuffing. So you can make him as fat or as skinny as you want. Now for row 18, you're going to need 12 rubber bands. We're going to do one single crochet in each of the stitches. So we're still um, doing the neck area here. And let me just zoom out just a little bit to try and get the bunny under here a little bit better. So we're just doing one in each. So that was my third. I think some of my bands look a little stretched at the neck here. So you can see that we're just buzzing along here. It probably took everybody a pretty long time to get to this point. I know it feels like it took me forever to get to this point. But we're definitely coming down to the home stretch. After we do the head and the ears, then he'll be done. He or she, I should say. So I have two stitches left here and two bands, so that's good. My last one. So now he has a little neck. This next row I'm going to be calling row one of the head and it is still going to be connected to the neck and we're going to do two single crochet in each of the 12 stitches so you're going to need a total of 24 rubber bands. So since we narrowed it down so much for the neck this is where we wanted to really spread out again for the head part so that's why I'm doing two in each of the stitches. So that's one, and there's two in that stitch. 
Just keep working my way around, doing two in each. And again, let me just move these bands because I know my bunnies just going to get them all messed up. definitely a little bit more challenging to work with when you have all of this body in the way, at least for me. If you're doing it um, at home and you're not having to fit it under a certain area, it's probably not as hard. So that was just my first one in that stitch, so I still need a second. So it looks like I have three more stitches left. So that's one. That's two, and then I have my last one here, and I have two bands left. Just move my clip. Rows 2, 3, 4, and 5 of the head are all single crochet, so you need 24 rubber bands for each of those rows. So I'm going to let you do those on your own. In row 6 of the head, we're going to start to do some decreasing. So the pattern is going to be 3 singles and then a decrease, 3 more singles and a decrease. And then at the very end, you're going to just have four singles because you're not going to have room to do that last decrease. So here's what your head should look like. So I'm doing three singles. So this is one. Two. three, and then the fourth and fifth stitches are going to go together. So I'm just going through each of those. And then pull it through. And now I'm doing three singles again. So that's one. two, three, and then I have a decrease to do. So these next two are going together. And then I have the three singles again. 
So it's one, whoops, one, two, three, and then my decrease. And then let me just push these up a little bit. I have one, two, three, and a decrease. And then you should have just four singles left. There's not going to be room for that last decrease. So it's one, two, three, and then the last one through the clip makes the fourth. and then move this. So again just take a minute and try and smooth out the decrease sections and the way that they should be, at least the one in the front here, I've tried to line up because you do notice it just a little bit. I try to line that up pretty much in the middle of the face. So now if you were to count you should have a total of 20 stitches going around the top of the head. For row 7 of the head, you're going to need a total of 15 rubber bands, and we're still decreasing. We're going to do it a little more frequently. So you're going to do 1, 2, and a decrease, 1, 2, and a decrease, and you're going to follow it all the way to the end. The last two stitches will be together. So I'm just doing my first single. and then a second and then we're going to put the third and fourth stitches together for a decrease and then I have one two and then my next decrease like I pulled a little too hard there, almost wanted to come all the way through. And now I have two more singles. And then the next two go together. And let me push these up here. Looks like we have two more sets. So that's one, two, and a decrease. And then we should have one more set here. So it's one, two, and then my last two stitches here, this one and then the one where the clip is, are going together. And I have my last band that's going to pull through. And move the clip. 
And so again, you can just adjust this a little bit. I want this decrease to be pretty much in the center here. And it sort of looks a little bit like it sticks out a little bit more on the left, but don't worry about that. You can just pull it up a little bit more on the right, and we can adjust it later. Turn this a little bit. The next thing I'm going to show you how to make is the nose, and you'll need four rubber bands for this. And so I'm choosing to use pink. And if you wanted to, you could use the twisty tie to help you make this. I'm not going to bother to show that. So you're taking one band and you're going to triple it on your hook. So you have the three loops on there. You're going to take your first band and pull it through all three. Put it back on and you're going to make a slip knot. Then you're going to let that one go. And you want to make sure you're going in through the same side. So I'm still going in here through the front. Going to pull through another band. Put it back on and make a slip knot. And then one more time from the same side, I'm going in, pulling through this last band, and making a slip knot. And so we want them to be spread out so it basically forms like a triangle shape. And then you're going to attach this to your bunny. Now I just want to say that this is going to be a little bit out of order because I actually closed up my bunny and put the ears on and then realized I should have done the face before I did that. So I had to um, work a little bit backwards here. So I know in the tutorial you're not this far with the ears, so just ignore those ears for now. And so what you should have should look more like this. So you need to find where you want to place the nose. So I'm just going to see where I think it would look the best. And I want the two bands to be on the top, or like straight across from one another, and the third band is going to go down to make like the bottom part of the nose or where the mouth is. So I'm going to take my hook from inside and go just a little bit slightly to the right of the center point where I want the nose. And I'm going to take one of the bands and pull it through to the back. And now I see that one of my slip knots came apart, but that's all right. So now I'm going to go out from the inside out and I'm going to take my other band for the left side of the nose and pull that straight back. So I have two bands on my hook and then I'm going to come out through and it's going to go just a little bit below because this is going to be the bottom part of the triangle. And you can see here how I said my slip knot came apart but that's alright. Just going to make the slip knot again here. And now I want to pull this last band in through so you can see that triangle shape. And then I'm going to take one more pink band and I'm just going to tie all of this together with a nice tight slip knot. And then here we have his little nose. And you can do some adjusting if you think it needs any. Now the next thing I'm going to do is make the mouth. And I have three pink bands for that, two for each side of the mouth and then one for um, an anchor band or a slip knot to keep it all together. And what I have done and what I would recommend doing is to stretch your bands out because we do want to, these to be on the longer side. And then you're going to take your hook and from the inside at the base of the nose here you want to come out. You want to grab one of the bands and pull it into the back. 
And then you want to see where you want the other part of the mouth to be. So I'm going to come over to the left here. And I am going to take this and twist this around a couple of times. And then put it back on my hook. If you don't twist it, it will gape open, which maybe you like the look of that, but I want mine to be more closed. I'm going to go through to the back, put one in through the other, and just for the moment, I'm going to put a clip on it. I'm not going to leave it there, but just to hold this in place. And then once again, I'm going to come out through that center. going to take another pink and pull it through to the back. You want to make sure it's staying on your hook and then you want to see where you want to come out for the other side of the mouth. So you want it to be even with the other side so I would say maybe right around here. And then I'm going to twist this around and get it back on my hook, maybe. It's a little definitely harder to get put on when it's twisted. And then pull this through to the back. So I have my two bands. I'm going to pull one through the other and then I'm going to go ahead and go to the other side and pick up the one that's on the clip. So I have the two bands, and I'm going to take my other pink, slide it through both, and again pull that nice and tight to make a slip knot. So now here's your mouth, and now you can do some adjusting to it. If you want to try and form it into like a little bit of a smile or a happy face. The next thing I'm going to do is add my bunny's eyes. And so I'm going to be using some black beads. I believe these are six millimeters. And you can see I have put them on a rubber band. And for that I just used my twisty tie to help me get those on there. If you don't have beads, you can always use buttons or you can use rubber bands. And I would suggest if you just have bands that you would take one rubber band and then wrap it around your hook I would say probably about four to five times depending on the tightness of your bands and then you just want to slide it onto another band or if you wanted to you could use two bands um, and then slide them onto another band just depends on how you want the look to be and then you can use that for an eye so what I'm going to do is just find where I want the eye to be so you just want to see where you think it would look the best. So I think maybe right around here. So I'm just going to take my hook and from the inside I'm going to push through. Grab one side of the band and pull it to the inside. And then I'm going to go over just slightly to the left. Push my hook through and grab the other end. And then I'm going to take one additional band and pull it through both of those and then just make a nice tight slip knot so you can see we have the one eye in place and then you want to see where you want the other eye and you're just going to repeat that process in row 8 of the head we're still doing even more decreasing you're going to need a total of 10 bands and you can see for every other stitch we're going to do a decrease so it's one single a decrease one single a decrease and so on so I'm doing just that one single and then stitch two and three are together and now for the next one I just have the single and then the next two go together so 
So I'm sure everybody's gotten the hang of this decreasing by now. We're really just trying to close off the top of the head here so we can finish it off. So that's my one and then my next two are a decrease. on because I keep losing it. There we go. And then doing a single. And then the next two together. Just turn him around and I have a single and then there should be two left for my decrease. So we pretty much have it closed off here except for just this little bit. And you can definitely tell a little bit where those decreases are because it sort of makes a little bit of a line. But I'm going to um, work with that. So right now what we're going to do is to finish filling the rest of his head with stuffing. So again, just do little sections at a time. In row 9, I'm going to continue with my decreases for every other. So I have a total of 7 rubber bands here. And you should just have not very much space here to work with. It's almost closed up. So I'm just going to continue around here. So I have a single. And you do have to be careful, try not to get any fuzz in your work now since we stuffed the head. I know it's a little difficult but I just wanted to stuff that before the hole got too small. So the next two are going together. And then the next is a single. And then two together. It's definitely getting to be a tight space here. And then there's a single. And then the next two together. And then finally another single. Now at this point it's almost closed up at the top so I'm just going to take my hook and go through the one that the clip is on and I'll just go through a couple of these bands here. 
just want to try not to get too much fuzz caught up. I'm already getting some fuzz on my hook. I'll just take another band and close this all together, make a slip knot. can take off the clip and then I just need to hide that down inside so we go in through the back here pull up through and grab this loop and pull it down inside and I'll just smooth it over and you can reshape this a little bit For the ears, we're going to be starting with a magic ring, and I have a total of six bands, so I'm going to have five through the center band. So I'm just going to take my twisty tie once again and triple this band. And now I'm going to pull these five through. I actually tried several different kinds of ears and I had envisioned my bunny with floppy ears and I did make floppy ears and they were sort of cute but I don't know something about it just I didn't love it I liked it but I didn't love it so I went back and reworked the ears until um, I had some ones that I was happy with and I really am happy with the ones I'm going to be showing you I think they're really cute so now you can take this out and then just spread these around and I'm going to get on my clip row two of the ears you're going to do increases so I want two single crochet in each of the five bands here so I have a total of ten So that's the first, and then the second, whoops, and this is what's going to wind up being the top of the ear, And then through the clip one, I have one more set. Take the clip off and move it. Now before I start my next row or pattern, I want to do one more single crochet that's going to go past um, the center point here. So you can see where I have my clip. I'm just going to the next stitch over and just doing this one band. And then I can remove my clip. And you really don't need your clip anymore after this point. In row three, you're going to need four rubber bands. And what we're actually going to be doing is working backwards. So this is the way you're used to holding it and you're used to going in from the front. But what we're going to do is flip this around. So now you need to be going in from the right hand side. And I'll be showing it from the top view here. So you have your band that your hook is through. You want to go to this next stitch over. So it is the one that is looped around the band that's currently on, but that's okay, that's what you want. So from the right hand side, you're putting your hook in, grabbing a band, 
It's going to come through, go back on, and then pull through the other two just like a regular single crochet. And so now we need to go to this next stitch above that. And you're pulling your second one through, back on, and sliding through. You'll go to your third stitch. And remember, you're always doing it from the right hand side, that's important. And then one more time will be the fourth. And so here's what it's going to look like. And then for this next row, you're going to just flip it back around so you can have this facing you. And once again, you'll be going in through the front. For rows four through nine, you're going to need four green bands and one white for each of the rows. And this is where we're going to be adding the little white for the center of the ear. So here's where we left off, and as I said, you're going to need to go um, just the regular way in through the front. And once again, you can see how this band is on my hook, and I do want to go through this stitch that the band is through. So I'm going in through this stitch all the way to the far right, taking my first green and just doing a regular single. And now I need to take the white band, and I want to triple this on my hook. So you're just twisting and putting it back on until you have the three loops. And then you're going to go into your next stitch. You're going to pick up your next green band. But before you get it back on your hook from the other side, you're going to get this white band, all three of the loops, to go on. And now you want to get the other side of the green on and pull through. So that links it around that um, one band, but we also wanted to link around the second band. So you're going to have to get your three loops to go right back on your hook. Go through that next stitch. You got your next green. It's going to pull through and then get the three white on it. Now you can pick it up from the other side, pull through. So if you look here, it's connected. And you can play around with the positioning of it in a little bit here. And let's just go to the next stitch over to the left. So you can see that this one we already went through, the one that looks kind of big. And now this next one is a little bit small and a little bit tight. But you do need to go through that. And finally you're going to take your last green for that row and pull through. And then for the next row, you're going to have to flip it. And again, you're going to be working backwards, going in through the right-hand side. The first stitch is going to be the one that your band is currently through, so you do want to go through that one. Pulling through that first green like regular. Then you're going to triple the white. Go in the second stitch, pull the green through, and now you're going to slide these three white on, get your green back on, pull through, then you're going to reset your white, so go through all three loops, moving over to that third stitch. Again, you're pulling through, getting the three white on, back on, and through. And then one more time, it's going to be a little bit of a tighter, smaller stitch here, this fourth one. Pulling through, and then just regular. So you'll just flip it over, and then here you'll see our two white tripled bands and you can, as I said, you can mess around with it. Sometimes you'll see the white sticking through and you will see it a little bit but if, sometimes you see it a lot and you just want to pull these forward and then you don't notice it as much. So let me just keep going with this since it is a little bit confusing. Now we're having this side facing us for this row. 
So again, I'm going through this first stitch on the very end. It's just a plain green. After that is when you want to get your white tripled. Second stitch. The green comes halfway through. Slide on your whites. Get the rest of it on and pull through. And then get your three whites on again before you go through that third stitch. Pull it through, add the whites, get the green, pull through, and then lastly, it's this small tight one here. Make sure you get through both sides of the band, and that's the regular. So this is how it's looking so far. So you're just going to continue in that same pattern for the other three. So I will let you finish that on your own. So I finished with my first bunny ear and I just added a clip at the very end. So then you just want to go ahead and repeat that to do your second ear. And if you need to follow along again, I'll add the time. Once you've completed your ears, then you're ready to attach them to the head. So you're going to need about four anchor bands for this. And I have two of the bands with a clip around them just to help them not pull all the way through as we're working with them. So you need to decide if you want your ears to be more slanted out to the side, straight up and down, more to the front or back. So I'm going to try and have mine be pretty much straight up and down and more towards the center. So I'm going to find a spot on the head here where I think I want the right edge to be. And I'm going to take my hook and go through two of the bands on the head. And then I'm going to take my ear and go through the far right stitch. And then I'm going to take one of my bands here that I have a clip on. And I'm going to pull that through the ear and through the one the bands of the head. So you can see it's going to pull the clip all the way forward but it shouldn't come apart because we've added that clip so it shouldn't slip all the way through. Just don't pull really hard. And then I'm going to take a look at the back of the head here and I'm leaving this on my hook and I'm going through just slightly over to the left and I'm going to go through two more bands I'm going to go through about the center of the ear. And now I'm going to take this band that the clip is on. I'm going to get it on my hook. You can take off the clip. Just don't lose it off of your hook. And now I need to pull this through the ear. And then I need to also get it to go through the head. So now I have these two bands on my hook. And I want to just leave them on there because I'm going to repeat this process again. So I'm going to go slightly over to the left on the head, go through two bands. Now I'm going to go through the ear. I'm going to take my other band that I have a clip on. I'm going to pull this through. the ear and then also through the two headbands. So at this point you're going to have three rubber bands on your hook and then finally I'm going to go a little bit over to the left and go through the next two headbands and I'm also going to go through this last stitch and then one more thing, you have this loose band here that your clip is on from the making of the ear. We're going to take that off and make sure that stays on your hook. I'm going to take the other side of the anchor band we're working with and I'm going to pull that through this one loose band 
through the ear, through the back headbands, and then I have four loops on my hook and I'm pulling two through the other two. And you can take a look at your ear at this point. I can release this other clip. You can look about the positioning of it if you think you like it. If not, just take it all apart and start over. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty straight and it looks like it's about the right spot for me. So I still have these two bands on my hook. So what I'm going to do is take an additional rubber band and I still need to anchor this to the head somehow. If you just put a slip knot band on here it would come apart. So I'm going to go through two other bands on the back of the head, pull through, and it looks like I pulled too hard. There we go. Make a nice tight slip knot. You don't want it to come apart. And then you would just have to hide this so you can just reach in from anywhere. Grab that loop and just hide it inside. Looks like I need to pull it in a little bit more. I'll push it. And so there is your first ear. And so I'm just going to repeat that again for the second ear. So I will let you do that on your own. I hope that everyone loves their new little Easter bunnies just as much as I do. And they're the perfect size to go with the Easter puff basket. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook. Post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page. And please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on my latest tutorials. You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram, so please feel free to subscribe to those as well. Thanks for watching!